transplantation of body parts under non-sterile conditions, sewing twins together, asphyxiation with nitrogen. During the Second World War, even soldiers saw less horror than prisoners in concentration camps. Nazi scientists spared neither the elderly, nor women, nor even children. In wartime, any kind of sadistic experiments could be done on prisoners in concentration camps. For example, in the laboratories of the University of Strasbourg, they organized their own Reichsuniversität, where even the skeletons for studying the human structure belonged to murdered people. So they tortured and murdered 86 Jews for the collection. In addition, immediately after the murder, their heads were separated from their bodies and placed in a special preservative solution for further experiments. Many insane Nazi experiments were documented thanks to information from witnesses. For example, the book called Beyond Human Endurance contains the stories of prisoners who survived women's concentration camp Ravensbrück, and there's a mention of one Ukrainian girl whose shoulder blade was removed by Nazi doctors. Then it was transplanted into another test subject with an amputated shoulder joint. Similar surgeries were performed on other women in the camp. Their legs and arms were amputated, and then they were killed right on the operating table with an injection containing a lethal dose of Evipan, an anesthetic. And these are not the most terrible surgeries which the prisoners went through. There were even cases when some of them had their intestinal loop twisted so that it turned into a second bladder. So the Nazis wanted to find loopholes in the human body that would help quickly recover their military, who returned from the battlefield with damaged body parts, and understand what additional abilities can be given to the body. In such experiments, death was mostly instantaneous, but the rest of the experiments caused the subjects to die slowly and in agony. The experiments where the Nazis put prisoners in the most extreme conditions were especially brutal. For example, in the Dachau concentration camp, specially sealed chambers were invented for experiments with low and high pressure. Prisoners in groups of 5 to 15 people were closed in a chamber. Then the pressure in the chamber gradually or sharply increased, which led to vasoconstriction, blood flow decreased, and it was more difficult for oxygen to get to the heart and other organs. After that, the pressure was sharply lowered. Due to the weak tone, some of the vessels closed. Oxygen and blood couldn't get to them, which disrupted the circulation of internal organs, primarily the brain. The prisoners pulled out their own hair, scratched their faces with their nails, and banged their heads against the wall until they finally passed out. In the end, most of them died from bleeding of internal organs. Some gas chambers could hold 200 or 800 people at a time. Thus, in the Auschwitz concentration camp alone, over a million people were killed in those chambers. And those who survived suffered from severe shock and mental disorders. Another, no less cruel experiment within the walls of Dachau belongs to the Nazi scientist Hans Eppinger. He chose 90 Romas who were deprived of food and drink and instead given only salty seawater. It causes unbearable thirst and profuse urination. This is because the salinity of seawater is almost four times the salinity of our body fluids. Joseph Tofenig, a prisoner survivor, recalls with horror seeing the experiment's victims try to lick a freshly washed floor or suck on a doormat, hoping somehow to get some fresh water. Test subjects had damaged internal organs and many of them died. No less brutal were experiments on the tolerance of extreme temperatures. Prisoners were undressed in the cold at minus 25 degrees Celsius and left like that for 15 hours. Every hour, they were splashed with cold water or even dumped in an ice bath. 
victims fainted from the cold. But they weren't allowed to die from drowning or choking, as they were given injections of strengthening tonic that prevented them from drowning too quickly. The lowest recorded body temperature shortly before the victim's death was 19 degrees. Most of the victims died. Formally, these experiments were supposed to help determine how to help the Nazi pilots if they crashed and fell into the cold sea. But in fact, the Nazis' torture prisoners didn't give any results. Even though all these Nazi scientists had remarkably little humanity, the cruelest among them was Joseph Mengele. Over the years of his work, hundreds of thousands of people had become his victims. Most of them were children. For this, he rightly received the nickname Angel of Death. But he asked the subjects to call him Uncle Joseph. At the concentration camp, Mengele created a kindergarten for young prisoners, treated them with sweets, and even performed violin etudes for them. He pretended to be their good friend. In his opinion, this way, the stress level in the children decreased, and the results of the experiments were more reliable. After games and treats, children were sent to painful experiments, which often ended in death. Mengele was especially obsessed with the study of twins. From the memories of eyewitnesses, we know that Mengele could even immediately kill a newborn child if they were born without a twin. Eva Moses, a survivor of Mengele's experiments, recalled genuinely terrible things. Three times a week, Nazi doctors tied both of her hands to restrict blood flow, then took large amounts of blood from her left arm, and at least five injections with unknown substances were given to her right arm. Her vitals were then compared with that of her sister Miriam, who was subjected to other torture. Joseph Mengele was interested in the differences between identical and fraternal twins, as well as how genetic diseases arise and affect them. Eva and Miriam miraculously managed to survive, but their health and psyche were damaged for the rest of their lives. Mengele's curiosity and, accordingly, his cruelty knew no bounds. As part of another experiment, he injected chemicals into the eyes of his subjects to see if it was possible to change the color of the pupil. Once, Mengele even sewed two Roma twins together in an attempt to create Siamese twins. The children died of gangrene after several days of torment. Mengele just wanted to confirm his hypothesis that his subjects were particularly vulnerable to disease due to their race, which is not as resilient as the Aryan race. Mengele was obsessed with the ideas of Nazism and the desire to kill people with impunity. In his lab, he even had a wall filled with the carved out eyes of his many victims. But for truly mass murders, Nazi scientists had an even more brutal technology. Not even six months had passed since the war started as Nazi scientists created gas chambers. It could be any large enclosed space with no windows and a tightly closed door. Prisoners were brought into the chamber, the doors were locked, and an inert gas was launched. Nitrogen entered the respiratory tract and oxygen levels in the human body fell rapidly. Death often didn't come immediately, but despite almost 100% mortality, some people managed to survive after the gas chamber, and not even once. One of them was Moshe Pierre. From the age of 9 to 11, he was a prisoner in the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. According to Moshe, he left the gas chamber alive six times. Moshe himself can't say how he did that, but he thinks it was easier for children to withstand the lethal gas. He remembers vividly how people suffocated and died next to him, and he can still hear the screams and groans, although many years have passed since then. All of these atrocities were committed by the Nazis 
only because they didn't want to waste precious ammunition on, as they said, the disposal of prisoners who weren't suitable for menial labor or experiments. And with the help of such a weapon of mass murder as a gas chamber, this problem was solved in their opinion, as it was less costly than shooting prisoners. However, none of the sophisticated experiments helped the Nazis avoid capitulation. So, why did they do it? Nazi scientists just mutilated people and created new ways of torture without any purpose, meaning, or justification. So, can we even call them scientists? 